So again, like I said, my name is Nabini. Welcome to the session today. I'm going to begin with the land acknowledgement. York University is a settlers institution occupying indigenous land. I recognize that this session workshop is virtual and we're not all gathered in the same space. So I would invite you to think about your space in relation to the land and that your that land that you're currently on. I'd like to remind you that the land acknowledgement acknowledges our history. York University acknowledges its presence on the traditional territory of many indigenous nations. The area known as Taukoronto has been caretaking by the Anishinaabeg Nation, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, the Huon Wendat, and the Metis. It is now home to many indigenous peoples. We acknowledge the current treaty holders, the Mississaugas of the New Credit First Nation. This territory is subject of the Dish with One Spoon Wampum Belt Covenant and an agreement to peacefully share and care for the Great Lakes region. I'm now going to hand it over to my work study student, Benisa Malik, who is a um, student in the Bachelor of Commerce program, BHRM, and she's been with us this year as her first year as a work study student with ACNETS. And so I'm going to hand it over to Veniza to begin the session today. Over to you, Veniza. Thank you, Navini. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Um, as Navini said, I am a fourth year student in the BCom program. So we'll be starting with the self-advocacy presentation today. So what is self-advocacy? A self-advocate is a person who speaks up for their self and lets other, lets other know what they think. Now you might be wondering, what do I mean by self-advocacy? I'm talking about making a bold proposal for a new direction, such as solving problems and making decisions, asking for more resources or better pay even pushing back and saying no when you've been told to take on another dead-end assignment. And we'll take a look at real-world scenarios you probably face where you can stand up for yourself and amplify your voice even more. This isn't about just being louder. It's about, it's, it's about a mix of proposing strong ideas, expecting, um, expecting and handling resistance, and pushing back for what's rightfully yours. A fierce self-advocate exercises their right to use their voice. They step into power. Join me for practices and tools to help you move forward. After all, power looks good on you. So, so what do you, what do you, so what do you advocate for? Do you want to know what the best self self-advocates do better than anyone else? Here's the twist. It's not a tactic. It's not a scripted phrase. It's not a maneuver. It's a mindset. People who get what they want and need view the world around them as highly negotiable. They see everyday circumstances as up for revision, as open to discussion. Nothing is written in cement. And this mindset is critical for you too. Let's be real. Everyone has an approach to advocating for what they need, but we're doing it in different ways. Let's walk through the three most common approaches to self-advocacy that I see. As I do, I'll help you see. Um, I'll help you see what you're doing now, so you can uncover the best approach. The first style is passivity. If you're someone with a passive style, you might take a wait and see kind of approach to getting your needs met. Rather than asking outright, you most likely delay stating your needs. Let's say for a raise, for fear you'll get rejected, or or you'll rub somebody the wrong way. If you do ask for something, you might be quick to defer to the other person, but passive does not mean indifferent or a person who doesn't care. But what stops this kind of thinker from asking for what they want is the belief that your needs and wants are more important than mine. Another style is aggressiveness. Someone with an aggressiveness, uh, aggressive mindset might think of a deal they're negotiating with a vendor in terms of crushing their opponent where there, there are only winners and losers. A person who asks for what they want in this way might, may be insistent, single-minded, even commanding. They repeat their points forcefully in declarations and sentences. The key belief driving the aggressive self-advocate is my needs are more important than yours. But moving on, the third style is what I call the magic middle. It's not passive and it's not aggressive. It, it's I call it the healthy entitlement. People who have a healthy sense of entitlement don't see their own needs as selfish, needy, or weak. They accept they have a need and then they get curious. Let's say they wanted to add another person to their understaffed team. They might ask questions about the circumstances or conditions needed to add that person. They might make a plea about how the understaffing is affecting the team's morale and productivity. 
they feel entitled to ask and go back and ask again. The belief powering this kind of self-advocate is your needs and wants are no more important than mine. Now, when I talk about developing a self-advocacy mindset, I'm talking about getting to that magic middle to healthy entitlement, advocating for yourself because you see your needs are important, putting your fears into perspective. Give yourself permission to ask for what you need. This, that means not telling yourself no before they do. So let's go over things you like about yourself versus things you would like to change. We can all have a moment where we journal our thoughts regarding three things you like most about yourself. These are aspects of your personality or characteristics about yourself that you would not like to change. In comparison, let's write down the three things that we may like to change about ourselves that can be related to your academic life or work or even within your community. You can drop your ideas in the chat box below. So advocating for yourself. No matter what you advocate for in your career, you, your unique set of strengths is your superpower. So how can you get clear on your strengths? The first thing I want you to do is start a success log. This is a document or notepad where you give yourself credit for putting your strengths into action. You add wins and compliments. You could also add efficiencies you've created, revenues you've brought in, or difficult projects you've completed that made a difference. Write them all down. This document keeps you honest about your positive accomplishments. It also acts as a historical record of your value when you need to, re when you need to negotiate for better job terms. And guess what else? Reading it will make you feel awesome. Second, get clear on your strengths. I can guarantee you that you have some kind of value that's going unseen or unnoticed. Your non-event is often right, productive place to begin advocating for yourself, be it for resources, opportunities, visibility, or formal acknowledgement of your work. Commit to scanning your environment for your strengths in action. After all, your contributions come from the unique properties you bring to your workplace. Be the world's best expert on what they are. So have you ever been excited to get a package only to have it arrive tinged or damaged. Disappointing, right? In a similar way, most people want to be heard, yet too often they fail to really get their ideas across, not because their ideas stink, but because, because, sorry, but because the package their ideas come in is flimsy, it's weak. As advocates for better roles, opportunities, and more, how can you make sure you're delivering your message with authority and confidence? So firstly, you need to amplify your voice. It's best to speak at a volume that can be easily heard. First, amplify your voice. It's best to speak at a volume that can be easily heard. You can also elevate your actions. When pitching your ideas, make sure that the words you use raise your stature, not undercut it. Stay away from think, I believe, I suppose, I suggest, I guess, all of which lessen the strength of your message. Instead, phrase your ideas in consistent terms like I recommend, I propose, I expect, I question, I urge, I advise. These are strong actions we associate with leaders. Use them as you fine tune your own personal speaking style. Cut filler words such as like and sort of you'll notice people will take you even more seriously. By speaking in clear, audible tones and using confidence building terms, you'll start to see yourself as an authoritative expert and others will too. So advocating for yourself, decide what you want to change. Clarify for yourself exactly what you need and want. It helps set your goals and channel the part to change. Be clear to others about what you need and want to change. It is, it is good to have a clear understanding of what you want to change. This can be done by listing your priorities, identifying how each could look like. Take your time here to really think through what you want. 
start building your options so you're ready to come negotiate in time. Remember, it's easy to make smart decisions when there are no bad options. So ask, let us be clear on this one. Subtle hints do not work. Strong hints do not work. Obvious hints do not work. Just say it. Remember to say please and thank you with a smile on your face. Being a vocal self advocate is the ultimate tool for being heard, getting what you want and sparking change. Make sure you are clear and do not use subtle hints or words like I think or maybe, but always be polite. So you can now learn the real issue behind an issue or come at the conversation from a new angle. So how can you empower yourself to get at good expensive questioning? Avoid dead end, dead end questions. These are questions that can be answered with a simple yes or no, and they tend to invite curt sur surface level responses. Some examples include, so you think I'm not ready to handle the account. Do you feel better about my raise request today? And is there a rule in place that I can't change my title? Often asked in a reactionary way, these questions can force a yes or no answer or worse, a defensive response. They can feel like an interrogation and they usually polarize a negotiation. Now let's flip our perspectives to deepening questions. These are the gold standard of communication, opening up dialogue, getting beneath the surface and showing your interest in other person's realities. Here are some examples. How could I help you feel more comfortable with this request? Would you be able to paint a picture of that for me? Can you explain how you arrived at that answer? What areas are most important to you? Can you explain why? When you're faced with anything but a yes answer, reach for deepening questions like these. They'll buy you time to think. If you want some more of my favorite go-to phrases, take a look at the exercise file. Remember, no ask, no get. Deeper questions will guide you. Thank you will guide and move the conversation along, helping you reshape your messages or change directions. They'll make a mutually beneficial result, which much more likely, and that right there is negotiation gold. So as planning strategy, using the information you have gathered, plan a strategy, something that you feel will work to get what you need or want for yourself. Get feedback on your ideas, act using the one idea that you feel is the most important to get the results you're seeking. As you make new proposals in your career, don't make the mistakes of going it alone. Seek out external opinions, refine your points and counterpoints, by using feedbacks from others, especially those who have already been on the same path as you. Play back your conversation. You may even notice you have a little more confidence and swagger. Gather support. It is always helpful to have support from family members, friends, advising, and other people who have similar issues to you. We've all heard the conventional wisdom that who you know matters, but did you know tapping your network delivers big when asking for what you want? It doesn't matter if you're getting ready to advocate for a better performance review, rating, or an exciting new project. You improve your chances of getting what you're asking for when you consult the ultimate knowledge bank. Other individuals who've been there, done that, or know more than you, about what you're asking for. So how can you start engaging your former and current support networks and individuals to build a great case for what you need? The number one benefit of consulting your network is that you'll often get further validation to ask for what you want. Target efforts. Who is the person, uh, department, or organization you need to deal with? Talk directly with the person you, who can best assist you. Keep trying until you find the right person. Let's take a look at some concrete ways you can skill up in setting clear limits. First off, you can not change what you don't label. So identify a boundary of yours that's either loose or non-existent today so that you can set a clear boundary. Experience. 
express yourself. If you are met with buts or no's, don't give up because you've got the power. When asking for what you need or want, know your rights and responsibilities. Be brief, be realistic, and stick to the point. Change your plan and get back to work. Make your voice louder. Sometimes you may even have to make many attempts, but don't give up. Escalate your issue. Ask to speak to someone else, like a supervisor or a manager, but get your point through. Be assertive. Don't lose your don't you don't lose your temper. Respect the other person, their character, or the organization, but state your need and want, and then listen. Being assertive is a core communication skill. Assertiveness can help you express yourself effectively and stand up for your point of view while also respecting the rights and beliefs of others. Being assertive can also help boost your self-esteem and earn others' respect. This can help with stress management, especially if you tend to take on too many responsibilities because you've had a hard time saying no. Assess your style. Do you, do you voice your opinions or remain silent? Do you say yes to additional work even when your plate is full? Are you quick to judge or blame? Do people seem to dread or fear talking to you? Understand your style before you begin making changes. Use I statements. Using I statements lets others know what you're thinking or feeling without sounding accusatory. For, for instance, say I disagree rather than you're wrong. If you have a request, say I would like you to help with this rather than you need to do this. Keep your requests simple and specific. Practice saying no. If you have a hard time turning down requests, try saying no, I can't do that now. Don't hesitate, be direct. If explanation is appropriate, keep it brief. Next, rehearse what you want to say. If it's challenging to say what you want or think, practice general scenarios you encounter. Say what you want to say out loud. It may help to write it out first too, so you can practice it from a script. Consider role playing, playing with a friend or a colleague and ask for clear feedback. Another way you can, uh, you can assert your voice can be through using body language. Communication isn't just verbal. Act confident, even if you aren't feeling it. Keep an upright posture, but lean forward a bit. Make regular eye contact. Maintain a neutral or positive facial expression. Don't cross your arms or legs. Practice assertive body language in front of a mirror or with a friend or a colleague. Another thing you can do is, you keep, is to keep your emotions in check. Conflict is hard for most people. Maybe you get angry or frustrated, or maybe you feel like crying. Although these feelings are normal, they can get in the way of resolving conflict. If you feel too emotional going into a situation, wait a bit if possible, then work on remaining calm, breathe slowly, keep your voice even and firm. The last thing you can do as being assertive is to start small. At first, practice your new skill in situations that are low risk. For instance, try out your assertiveness on a partner or friend before tackling a difficult situation at work. Elevate yourself afterwards and tweak your approach as necessary. So another thing you can do to raise you, to advocate for, for, for yourself is to be firm and persistent. Don't give up, keep going after what you are asking for. Always follow through on what you say. Dedicate the time to getting whatever it is you are asking for. It will be worth the effort. And then once you get what you want, celebrate when you are getting the changes you want to. Make these little changes in your character so you can be a better self-advocate for yourself and stay encouraged. So good things don't just come to those who wait, they come to those who ask and advocate. Do that and then look around and mentor someone else to do the same. Don't just advocate to your own career, advocate to own your life. Now's the time to go for it. Thank you. If you have any questions, we have listed our 
uh, contact details for ACMAPS down here. Um, and if you have any questions, you can drop them in the chat box below. Okay, thank you, Vanessa. What I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna end the recording and then we'll go into the gallery view to do a Q&A for anyone who has any questions. Just give me one second, please.